Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second installment of Root Fire TV's Lighting Roundtable. Man, what a show I have for you today. My name is Peter Spadaro, and I'm the lighting designer for Stick Figure and Modest Yahoo, also at the Brooklyn Bowl. Today, we have a tremendous panel of talented lighting designers from your favorite bands. These three guys put on a hell of a show, and I always have a great time working with them. The world of jam band lighting is a very unique, mostly unscripted place where most of the time the LD is actually playing along with the band, which can make for some magical moments, not only for the audience, but for the programmer, operator, or designer themselves. Um, we're gonna get this started. Uh, we're gonna, if, if anybody has any questions for any of the uh, lighting designers here, please feel free to ask. Um, we're gonna jump right in. Uh, first up, we have Andrew Getty. Andrew is the lighting designer for Goose and also the owner of Getty Sound and Lighting. Andrew has worked with acts such as Noah Kahan and Disgo. Say hello to Andrew. Andrew, hey, what's up? What's up, guys? What's up, Pete? How you doing? How you doing? Moving right along. Next up is Alex Herm Schneider. Herm is a lighting designer for Twiddle and owner of Herm Productions. Uh, Herm has worked with The Works and Future Rock as well. Say hello to Herm. Herm. Hello world, Peter. What up? Hey. There's him. And last but not least is Manny, the human Lumen Newman. <laughs> Manny is a lighting designer for Pigeons Playing Ping Pong. Uh, Manny and I go way back. Manny was the lighting designer for the first band that I tour managed, Ficus. Um, and quite frankly, probably wouldn't be a lighting designer if it wasn't for Manny. Um, Manny has worked with other acts such as Electron and Billy and the Kids. Say hello to Manny Newman. Hey, Manny. everyone. Excellent. Let's tell our intro, Pete. <laughs> yes, yes. Back and bring it back to Ficus days. Yeah. Um, so to, right off the bat, um, thank you, fellows, for coming. Um, just wanted to see, check in with you guys. What have you guys been up to? Um, shows, whatnot. Um, Getty? Uh, well, we just started uh, our drive-in run last week. We did uh, Cape Cod. Um, that was fun. It was weird kind of um yeah. rusty but uh it was good it felt really good to be back um and then we did a uh like a pod style type show in south farms which is really cool as well um way different because everybody's spread out and there's no cars in between everybody so it like, yeah. feels like there's nobody there um but uh yeah it's good to get back uh back out on the site fantastic Herm, what do you been up to uh, well, just been going out with Twiddle a little bit here and there on the um, drive-in shows. Been interesting. A couple of them are, you know, one was no sound, one was with full sound. So that was pretty interesting. And they did that little uh, Roots tour streaming thing, which was uh, very interesting. There was no one there. Uh, so that was uh, kind of crazy to just be in a room, full lighting rig and not a person there with no sound or anything. So, yeah. Very interesting uh, few months here. <laughs> yeah. Manny, how about yourself? What have you been up to? Well, I guess in the beginning of the pandemic, I was pretty much only working on uh, my master show file for months <laughs> and uh, watching a lot of terrible television and movies and everything. Well, we've been doing a couple shows. We did a couple streams and uh, some of the drive-in stuff. Uh, but yeah, that all that. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Now, all three of you guys have done the drive-in shows. Um, has there been any pros, cons um, with the drive-in show versus a uh, regular show, per se? Andrew? Um, what are the biggest differences? In well, the, the first show? experience, um, you know, like, people are really far back. Like, unless you're in the first, like, you know, first few rows, like, you're far back, so... A lot of people, I, I realized that most people are watching the video screens and not the stage. Yes. Um, if you're at a certain point back, um, I just I just did my thing and didn't even think about that really at all. But it definitely was uh, probably the biggest thing. Excellent, Herm. Uh, pretty much exactly that. Like, there's really no one even in front of you at all. So you had to really switch up how you were 
uh, lighting up the, especially the, the band members, because a lot of the time the cameras were just on them and yeah, people could see like the, the wide shot all the way back there. But like he said, like most people are watching the big screens like the whole time. So really had to be careful around, um, you know, focusing to make sure the band was lit and, um, you know, just that's pretty much it. Manny yourself. Ooh, the biggest thing is definitely since there's like an FM transmitter, there's latency. Yeah. And latency yeah, yeah. sucks. So what I've been doing is if for the ones with the PA shows, I have I've been taking the direct feed as like for my monitor and then like the, the PA. But for the ones without a PA, I've been getting the, the delayed feed, the FM feed. So because so then uh, the light show kind of matches. If not, there will be like so uh, I'll be ahead of the, the actual music with my, my hits and stuff. So yeah, that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, I was doing that too. Like I'd take one ear out and like try to see how far it was. And then I would actually get with my, uh, our engineer and be like, you have to like delay me. Like exactly. Yeah. It helps so much. Yeah. Kind of just wonky. You hear that snare coming out from wherever. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's gonna be, you're, you're using like a Walkman instead of a, an ears pack. It's yeah. <laughs> be an interesting feeling. Yeah. Excellent. Um, now we're going to get into design a little bit here. Um, uh, let's, let's walk through the, uh, each of your design process individually. Um, Getty, what do you what do you think about when you're designing for Goose? Um, well, definitely I start out with an idea in my head. But the uh, biggest thing for me is putting it on a 3D previs. Um, I just got capture recently. Um, and like, I'll put my ideas on, you know, previs and I'll be like, yo, this looks good. That looks stupid. And, you know, put things, move around things and uh, just find out, you know, do what looks, you know, best on previs and then, you know, go live with it. And then usually tweak a little bit stuff on site as well. But yeah. uh, that's, yeah. Excellent. What is, what is what walk me through your design process? Um, well, when I'm coming into an artist, I'll definitely have some sort of idea beforehand and we'll, you know, kind of show them or talk to them about kind of what they want and what kind of show they're looking for. And then from there, it's really big on like budget and availability of fixtures. And once I have like that kind of like grouping of uh, ideas I'll start to like I mean even just like on a napkin or anything I'll just come up with a a few lines of something and then I'll put that into 3D and then send it off to the band or festival uh, and you know render it out and make sure that they like it and make the tweaks from there excellent Manny yourself um uh, I started yeah with like a the trust and the structures usually in like MA 3D just start with that's like my starting design and obviously budget matters so that's pretty much the first thing you try to get uh yeah. just so you know what you're making what size you're making but uh you know you start with the structures then you choose the fixtures and then adjust it also based on budget you keep getting those quotes back and um then i always always do like an a b and c package depending on the rooms we go to so yeah that's yeah, definitely super important to always be modular with your rig yes as there's as as all three of us all four, four, all four of us now that there's always uh always a small room that you have to run into and and you, know, you depend on for sure somewhat <laughs> it's 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 always a fun challenge to have yeah even there's like big rooms like playstation theater that just have low ceilings and you gotta yeah. work with that yeah and uh, um, may the PlayStation Theater rest in peace. Yes. <laughs> um, now, when you're designing your your rigs, uh, how much of the how much of the the design does the band input on Getty? Uh, usually, I uh, just throw stuff together. Um, I work with you know. Usually, get my first feedback from Peter. Mm -hmm. um, and he usually like, yeah, this looks sick, or like, yeah, we should like do this instead. Um, but usually, you know, it's pretty much up to me. But uh, you know, I work with you know the guys to see what they think, and uh, you know, move forward with you know their ideas as well. Has there been anything in particular that you could think of that that they really enjoyed that you've done? 
Um, they love the like the three the pixel mapping fixtures. Yeah. So like right now we've got Paladin Bricks so violation, um, and they've got you know six uh, you know different layers where you can you know pixel map, which they like a lot, especially when they're getting into like deep jams and stuff. So yeah, for sure the the multi instance fixtures. Excellent, Herm. Um, with Twiddle, I guess I'm with them now. Um, they kind of like just that I change it up. Um, usually every tour I'll do something different. And like the one tour I had those like lanterns hanging and all that. And I, I'm like really huge on some sort of, uh, set piece or something like that, which we're going to be doing some more of that eventually, obviously. But, um, they really loved when I did that. And, with the acoustic cool. show, the higher ground acoustic show. You were oh, that to? was that was completely different type of show there. Um, that was really cool getting to control like all the lamps and all that stuff. But now I'm talking about when I had the those hanging lanterns there for you know one of the tours last year. Uh, so that turned out pretty well. But uh, the introduction of the lasers came in, um, and they really kind of liked how I was doing that, uh, and so we been doing that for a while now so that's kind of one of the things they like but no i mean the, generally they if i have a different idea i'll ask them about it and once we get through that you know we agree on something and then i'll i'll just start start bringing that rig out or build it out and be ready for it whenever we go on tour fantastic manny how much of the band uh, have have input on your lighting design well uh when i first joined the band uh greg would always uh tell me a bunch of cues that would work well. It's like, hey, put a spotlight at this moment. He was very theatrical. So in the beginning, he had a lot of say in, in certain cues that were that were being made. Um, but at this point, uh, full creative freedom. I have got to that point. And uh, they don't really, um, you know, they give me full trust. I, 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 no worries on anything. It's great. So <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have. It's always good yeah. to have. Um, excellent. Um, now let me ask you guys a couple quick, couple quick questions here. Um, what is your favorite indoor or outdoor venue and or indoor outdoor venue to like Getty? Uh, off the top, probably 930 club. 930 club indoor. What about an outdoor venue? Um, permanent outdoor venue. Uh, I don't really have a lot of experience doing. Mm -hmm. Um, probably the coolest like outdoor show I've done was, uh, when we did the Dead and Company playing in the stand, uh, we got to do their like pre party. Um, and that was probably the coolest, you know, like the main, the, the main, the main stage. Yeah. 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 Totally. Um, Herm, favorite indoor venue? Um, I got probably two because they're both kind of different. Like, one, of course, 930 Club. I love the new rig in there that they, they did. Uh, shout out to Pulse. That was sweet. Um, but also, I mean, I got a, the Capitol theater. I mean, that thing is just, it's just such a big chunky, all the truss lit up and stuff. You just get so many different looks with the different, um, levels of lighting and stuff. There's not no, there's no like straight lines really. I mean, there's a couple in the middle, but I love those, uh, huge truss looks. And, um, of course the video, which every, every time I've been there, I did the video for it. And, uh, that's just a whole different thing with surrounded by video and then yeah. adding lasers and stuff. We had a full, full gig in there last time. For those who don't know, the Capitol theater has a dome on the inside that they uh, project onto. And um, as designers, you get the option of choosing your own, um, what you're projecting onto the wall or the Capitol theater has it themselves. Uh, Manny, uh, favorite indoor venue. 930. I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such a great venue. Even with the old rig, the crew there is fantastic. It feels big, but it's small. Yeah. Um, and the cupcakes. Come on. The cupcakes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who, who else gives cupcakes? <laughs> no one. Hopefully, the 930 Club is watching this and they could each send us all some cupcakes as we all would like some cupcakes. <laughs> Please do. Vegan 930 cupcakes. Vegan 930 cupcakes would be great. Yeah. I'll be down with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, outdoor venue, uh, Red Butte in Salt Lake City, Utah. Gorgeous. That Fantastic. place, it's just, you're in a garden. 
Like, how could you not like that venue? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, excellent. Um, now moving on. Um, favorite song to light from your from the bands that you work for currently, or any band that you worked for in the past. Uh, Getty, what's your favorite Goose song to light, and why? Uh, probably Yeti, um, which is technically not a Goose song. Uh, it's a great blues song. Uh, Peter's band, um, but uh, you know Goose plays it. Um, and uh, it became my favorite song recently during COVID um, because I wrote like I've been writing like huge songs, and uh, that one, the structure of that song is like a lighting designer to like you know playhouse. So, uh, that's definitely my favorite one right now. Splendid, Herm. What's your favorite Twiddle song to like? Uh, I think right now is uh, B Hop. Um, it's very all around i mean there's like three different genres of music up in there and lots of cues for it uh on the fly mostly uh but i, I do start it out the same every time and uh, i just like that it moves into the different genres of music with the rapping and the then they go into like some reggae stuff and i just i just like that it's all well-rounded with different different styles of music excellent so manny favorite pigeons playing ping pong song to like Fade fast. Why is that? Well, it uh, it really um, it was one of the first songs that um, I really hit me when I was doing live, but also really the song just takes you kind of everywhere, which helps me kind of uh, showcase certain styles of jamming that I do within the lights. So um, it really just takes takes you everywhere, and I kind of like that, you know, because it's not just you know it's not one dimensional. It's there's there's it takes you just everywhere. And, I like that. I like that. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Um, let's, let's make a rig using one fixture. Your favorite fixture or or the, your, your, what you think is the most versatile fixture to use. One one fixture per rig. Getty? Uh, B.I. B.I. The entire rig B.I. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. why, why would you choose a B.I.? Uh... I just love the right now. I'm just all about the multi instance fixtures, and obviously, BI like K20 is like you know has the most. Uh, you have a lot with the pixel mapping. You can just do a lot with it. Um, you know, you can almost get that gobo effect too with it, plus a beam effect um, with it all the way in dense. So, one fixture, I think I could do the most with that. Excellent. For those of you who don't know, a multi-instance picture is when there's numerous little lights with inside of a light, essentially. Uh, Herm, one fixture. Make a rig. Uh, I'd probably have to go with a BMFL. Excellent. Why is that? It's got like a really big zoom, which I love using that, and uh, wash. And then, I mean, it gets tight just like a beam. It's kind of a hybrid with a wash and all that. So I think... Being able to project with it, make patterns on site, or uh, wrap around an artist with the zooming and the a pretty decent gobo package, um, I'd say that. But I also like um, the uh, Roby Pat fixture. Uh, it's like a big, just glowing thing. I used them at Red Rocks a couple of years ago, and I just love the physical look at that uh, look of it. But also, it produces a really warm looking, nice looking lighting. It's, it's the, in my opinion, the classiest fixture out there. It's very, very classy. <laughs> very, very classy. Manny, let's make a fixture. Let's make a break using one fixture. Well, you guys already chose the fixtures I kind of wanted. So, <laughs> um, uh, I, I was going to say BMFL, but you know, the BMFL, the red is terrible on there. Uh, so right. I guess. BI would definitely be my second uh, option on that because come on, so it would it'd be cool to have a whole rig just BIs. <laughs> I, recently, I recently saw somebody build like a big BI using many BIs. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Rammstein, dude, Rammstein. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, we have a question here from a one Zach Schwartz. What's up, Zach? Zach, hey, Zach. How do you adapt your lighting to everybody watching the LED screens? How heavy is that on your mind when you guys light the drive-in shows? 
Uh, for me, I haven't watched them at all. Like at first, I was trying to watch them, but it was it's delayed a little bit. Uh, so it's it was just a, I looked at it for ten seconds. I was like, I'm not. I gotta just run the show. Um, but when we did do our like bingo tour, our virtual tour, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was watching, you know, the the screen, the video screen. I had a monitor set up right next to me. Um, obviously, people are watching at home, but I had like even a position where I, you know, pointed all the lights just at that front of house camera, um, and you know, I did cool gobos and stuff. Um, so that I definitely looked at it more for the virtual stuff, but for the drive-in. Uh, I, I just can't watch it. I just got to watch the stage, you know? Yeah. Herm? Yeah, I feel kind of the same way. I mean, when you're outside, you're just trying to get that show running. Uh, but I, I kind of was watching the screen to see how much the video crew, Getty, he's got the advantage of, like, being right there with them and talking to them and all that and knowing them. But sometimes you're with a crew that you're not totally – in sync with because you don't know where when they're going to cut and and stuff like that so really i kind of was watching to make sure the band was lit up correctly and or backlit or side lit with gobos or something to keep like a texture going uh while they were playing while making sure that they were still lit because i mean if you go dark the screen's dark and you know you can't have that so kind of focused on that many um, the way I, I would I would look at the screen actually fairly often, um, just because of the front lighting. Uh, some video crews they have a mastering suite where, you know, you don't really have to worry too much about ma uh, front lighting. But then you go to places where they're just you know direct from the camera, and front lighting makes a huge difference. So it could be overexposed super easily. Um, so for these driving shows, I've been uh, really updating my hundred percent presets uh, on my front wash. Um, so I never, ba basically I put like the front wash, the max at maybe like 75 or 65, depending on the fixture, because sometimes if you go to a hundred percent and you look at the screen and it just, it just looks out. washed out, you yeah. know? So you, you, it, it's, it's good to just look at it at least once and just update the one preset. Mm -hmm. Cause then, then you don't have to worry about it because then you could you don't have to look at the screen. So it, I would it's usually just spend the first fifteen minutes kind of adjusting the the dimmer presets. And it also helps sometimes when the video crew has a monitor out front of the house for you as well. That's, yes, that's absolutely. Fun. If not, you're doing one of these like yeah, kind of like, yeah. <laughs> that's always annoying. That's always annoying. Excellent question, Zach. Um, questions are encouraged. Everyone ask questions if you have any questions to ask. Um, fantastic. Uh, moving on. Um, who influenced, who's your biggest influences within the lighting world? Um, who helped you get to where you are currently style wise? Getty? Uh, well, besides Herman Manny, <laughs> uh, like the, what, right when I first started going to live shows, uh, like 2012, um, I went to an Humphrey show downtown Indianapolis at White River. And after that show, I was like, wow, like I never even knew there was like such a, you know, the lighting was such a big aspect of the show. And after that, I just started diving into, you know, everything stage lighting pretty much from there. So definitely, uh, waffle, uh, Humphrey's old LD definitely helped big time. Her? I'm going to go with uh, my college uh, theater professor, Rob Shakespeare. He kind of like taught me more about like uh, color and, you know, color theory and emotion stuff because theater lighting is kind of where I started. Um, and that kind of moved into then the, you know, Corota, of course, and um, Candace Brightman. I mean, I love her her work with fabric and set piece stuff like that. So that kind of where I got that whole aspect of it. But, you know, I like Corotta's big looks, which is what I like to, to use slow movement. Uh, but all in all, I mean, my, my theater professor was probably the one that really taught me the most about color theory and, and everything else. Moving lights. I mean, you, you know, you, there's a lot more going on there, but, um, 
I think the basics is where you really have to start with something like this. Uh, somebody just commented, and I, just, I was going to say it as well. A theater professor with a last name Shakespeare. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It's hilarious. He was very, he was like, I don't know, he, he was extremely like passionate about it. And uh, I guess I kind of am as well now. Fantastic. Manny, who's your influences? All right. Chris Kuroda, for sure. Well, that's my yeah. first one. Because, yeah. I mean, I, I, Fish was the first band that I've seen like, like actually toured, like fall around the country. Um, I've been seeing them since 2010 and they, I, I've literally studied Chris Perota's way of operating lighting and that's definitely my biggest influence. Um, I would say my next one would probably be Saxon Waller who used to do Sound Tribe, uh, SES9, fantastic. Like he was almost there and then he stopped uh, with Sound Tribe. Like, the stuff he did on those last couple of shows were just phenomenal. And um, Jefferson Waffle, he used to work with Umphreys, Color Theory, fantastic. Um, uh, Mark Brickman of uh, Pink Floyd, fantastic too. Uh, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys know Luke Stratton. Uh, Luke Stratton was big when I was younger. Uh, he kind of opened up the, the world of MIDI uh, lighting, <laughs> MIDI operating to me. I was like, oh. This is actually uh, feasible. You know, you could get a couple controllers and actually do this. Because before, <laughs> I always thought you're like, oh, you got to get that sixty thousand dollar console, or you're not doing it. Yeah. But uh, he was definitely a uh, um, big. And now you, and and now you, don't even, you, you won't even use an actual console. I won't. I won't use a full size. There could be ten full sizes there. I won't touch them. Mm -hmm. I'll not work with them, but I won't touch them. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take the parameters, but you won't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, here's a, here's a question from Possums Video 8. When customizing faders and buttons for your show file, what things do you feel are most important to keep in mind? Getty? Um, definitely, um, consistency for sure. Um, like every time I like change things up, um that's when like i don't remember where things are so like a lot of a lot of stuff that i have right now on my faders and my buttons are like pretty similar from when i first got started um you know they're all right there uh because when i try to change stuff up i completely forget where they are um so definitely that's the most important thing for me okay sure. Uh, I'd say this is pretty huge on what kind of show you're running. Like if you're punting something, punting a show, um, I mean, muscle memory is huge. Like he's talk, like, like Getty's talking about. I mean, if it, if you start, start changing stuff up, I mean, it gets really different. I changed my console uh, over the past year and a half or so. And uh, it took me a while to get used to it. Um, but I'm happy with it now. But as far as, like what to keep in mind. Yeah. I mean, I want everything that that light can do in front of me at any time. So yeah. any parameter of the fixture, be it color, gobo, prism, beam, you know, any, anything like that. I kind of want to have access to that. Um, just whenever, because you never know when the band's going to change or uh, start jamming. And then you have to really just do it on the fly. Manny. Um, I guess when I started, like, um, putting things places, I kind of printed out, you know, the console, my console, my controllers and sectioned off certain areas for certain types of cues and, and put, you know, things that belong next to each other, next to each other, instead of like just sporadic and everything was pretty much in small sections. And if, if you, if you just remember where you put those sections, you'll be fine. There is no right or wrong where you put things. But as long as you remember where you put it, it's 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 really important just to remember where you throw things. It doesn't matter where you put it, uh, but just be concise. You know, try to just section off things. I think that's the best idea. Excellent, fantastic question. Excellent. Uh, who is that from? Thank you, Possums Video A. Again, questions are encouraged. <laughs> um, let's see. We got that one. We got that one. Um, Let's see. Favorite effects. What's your go-to effect? 
Getty? Uh, definitely, uh, dim, definitely dimmer effects. Yeah. Um, definitely like go to um, dimmer effects, but uh, when you can get into like you know dimmer with movement with color, um, that's when it really gets fun. Excellent, Herm. Um, I'd say I mean, there's a lot of effects out there and stuff like that. But I guess with Twiddle, I just have that uh, just a random. Um, dimmer chase that you know it, it just it doesn't go all the way to zero so you just kind of get this flickering effect because they with ryan on the keyboard he's always like doing these little twiddly things and it, i think it just like, really looks good with their um how much they like play like that i mean obviously they're called that but uh other than that i mean i like chasing different um beam functions like prism and and stuff like that, and also um, zooming effects. I like different groupings of zooming effects. So, like four lights are zoomed in, eight of them are off, and you know it just kind of zooms in and out like that. I, I like using those. And um, gobo uh, rotation chases. I started doing some of those a couple of years ago, uh, where they just kind of like twist every, you know every other light or whatever. I think that looks very effective on like psych scenes and stuff like that. So I've been using that. Excellent. Manny. Boom. I'm going to do a weird one and say focus effects because it, it's just such a left field thing to do that it's, it's pretty overlooked. Um, but a little focus effect, it's just nice subtlety. It kind of just trickles around and I love like zoom effects and color effects and dim effects, but those subtle stuff is what gets me. If I notice someone doing like a cool little focus thing around, I'm like, that's classy. So I'm gonna go focus effects. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know I love you love the focus. You also you still you, you, I don't know if you still have your little. Do you, you still have your Shawe um, bursts? Oh no, I sold those. Um, oh, you did. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, special, right? we outgrew them. We outgrew yeah. them. Um, they didn't have a locking IEC. They had regular IEC, and I can't risk that anymore. It needs to have a locking power con, or I'm not going to touch it. Because <laughs> if that goes in the air and something happens, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kevin McKay to the rescue, climbing the rig. Exactly. <laughs> We've had some weird ladder moments. Uh, yeah. Been there. Uh, Let's see here. Um, we have another question uh, from Amy Litchfield. Amy asks, what is your dream venue to light? Um, Getty? Um, probably Red Rocks. I uh, haven't been out there yet. Um, you were supposed to be. We were supposed to be, yeah. Uh, that or the Gorge, for sure. I went and saw Fish at the Gorge a couple of years ago. Um, it's a haze nightmare, like the like Red Rocks, but uh, that venue is just so cool. Um, you know, it's like once you get to the bottom, it's like a hike to get back to the top. Um, that those two definitely probably most people would say, but yeah, fantastic. Herm, I mean, obviously, the gorge that'd be awesome, but you know, effectively with the haze and all that, it's it's different, but uh, I'd say MSG definitely would love to do that one because I just, it's so iconic and doing a big venue like that. I can't wait to get in there at some point in my life and hopefully I do. Yeah. Manny. Well, I was going to say MSG. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. So the, like MSG is the best venue you could possibly play being from New York. And it's just, I've seen so many new year's fish shows there. It's, I mean that uh, also Hampton, Hampton. Yeah, mothership. Yeah. That's a nice indoor venue. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say MSG would be my number one. Excellent. They also they actually have that new MSG sphere getting built up out in Vegas, which should be pretty cool. Hopefully, when we get back to work, that that will be an option for. <laughs> Tell me more about that real quick. I'm not familiar. Um, I don't know what the venue capacity size is, but it's it's uh, Charlie Dolan building a a sphere venue out yeah. in the middle of Vegas. 
Mm. Um, and if anybody can figure out how how many what the capacity is and comment below, that would be great. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be gorgeous. It, it like literally looks like the universe. It's yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be incredible looking. Last time I was out there for New Year's with stick figure, it was like just getting the the framing around it. It was it was looking pretty cool. So hopefully by the time I head out to Vegas again, it will be ready to go. Um, thank you, Amy, for your uh, question. Let's, let's get rid of this. Um, excellent. Um, advice for someone that wants to get into lighting, a young LD, what would you tell them? Okay. Uh, call Luke Stratton. <laughs> Uh, this, is my, this, is my second, this is my second round table and it's, it's that's been the, the yeah. uh, consensus all around. Luke helped me out big time. Um, but uh, Blake Addington, he's another lighting buddy of mine. He, uh, I saw him when he was working with Lettuce and uh, you know I met him at a show and he's just like, just go home and download MA2 and just, just look up some YouTube videos. So I, you know, that's what I did when I first got into it. Downloaded MA, took me like a week to finally figure out how to connect 3D with that. Um, but uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, all the Christian Jackson videos are awesome. Um, but yeah, mainly just get the software um, and just dive into it. Herb? Uh, yeah, I would kind of say a little bit similar things um first i would just try to like look at all your options with lighting consoles uh because there's a lot a lot of different kinds and they all do different things they all do the same thing at the end of it all but they all kind of the workflow is different most of them are free so you can easily download any of these programs and just kind of try to look at it and there's 3d modeling softwares that you can see if you like it and then after that i mean Really, you just got to kind of get into the industry and work your way up from the, I mean, I, I worked my way from the very bottom. So it just, you really got to just figure out what you want to do and then um, just start learning the tricks of the trade and figure out the, the software and console you might want to try. And then maybe even try to work for a local company that, AV company that you'd be around. Manny? Uh, advice, I guess, uh, I'm going to say this is pre pandemic, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, be a sponge, you know, absorb everything. Um, and you know, really, uh, if you're, you got talent, you're going to get noticed. Uh, so just don't be hard on yourself. Everything comes with time. Um, network, network, network. Network. I mean, uh, I paid to work my first festival. Uh, so do what you got to do. <laughs> uh, th that festival was in a hotel and the hotel, they charge the artist hotel and the crew and the hotels end up costing more than the actual gig. So I basically, uh, I lost money to it to work. Oh, yeah. That's which, I mean, because of that, I got way more jobs. I got scouted and then I got all the, I booked all the festivals in the, uh, the East Coast. It was That's great. Right. It was fantastic. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about that this morning, the, the night that I was helping you, we did, um, we did Hodor in oh, uh, yeah. Two Kings. And Grave then of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. And we broke down. <laughs> Uh, your rig and put it in the back of your Jeep and go to Connecticut and set up for shuck and jive the next morning. Yes, yeah. And that, and that was also the same day you were like, who's Jefferson that's calling me? And you were like, oh shit, it's Waffle. He called and you and you got the billion the, kid, the kids gig. Oh yeah. He, he for, Electron. Me, um, uh, for Electron and yeah. Conspirator. Um, but that was, that was weird to wake up one morning with like message from Waffle and being like, yo, what's up? <laughs> you know, like, what? What's going on? <laughs> uh, amazing. Amazing. Um, let's see if we got that one. Um, oh, here's a very good question again from Possum's Video 8. What is a feature you'd like to see added to fixtures in the future? Like, is there anything you wish a certain fixture could do that it doesn't? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. I like that. Um, 
I know for me, I mean, I, I, I think Manny's the same way on this too. The, um, what are they? The best boys. They have that, that scrolling gobo into the gobo. Everything should have a gobo fade for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. just beyond me. Why? I mean, I know, understand why, because it could get too hot and melt the mechanism, but figure it out. It's about is that, time. Is that that LED technology. Come on. Yeah. yeah. The, the, if, Cause if you do a long gobo fade and you get in between the gobo, yeah. Some of the things are like plastic and they could get warped. Yeah. Uh, so if you find a fixture that could do a gobo fade, it's usually on the second gobo wheel because that's a metal gobo wheel and won't get warped. We'll never do it on the first gobo wheel. Um, but yeah, every fixture should have that. It's it, 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 Everything is getting cooler with the LED technology. Figure it out. Yeah. There you go from Manny Newman himself. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that one. Yeah, and give me a brown light. I want a brown light. Yeah. That's a brown, that's a brown light. <laughs> uh, anything else? I would say, uh, like intensity on every color being correctly outputted. Like sometimes you use the darker saturated colors, and it's just like almost non-existent on some of these fixtures. I'd, I'd, I'd say it'd be cool if somehow it increases the intensity when like a red comes in or something like that. So you have the same brightness on, uh, you know, through the colors. You're saying like a compensation. Right. Power parameter or something like that. That'd be interesting. Getty, yeah. anything, anything else then? Uh, off the top of my head, I definitely, those are the two things. Um, we will probably keep it at that. Um, oh, a little uh, update here on the MSG, MSG Sphere. Uh, it's 17,500 capacity uh, and will feature LED screens inside and outside of the venue, according to Mr. Brian Korshine, another lighting designer All from right. the great state of Brian. New Hampshire. See you next um, week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Um, excellent question. Um, another question from Zach. What are some of your favorite programming tricks? <laughs> um, are we jumping in here? <laughs> uh, an easy one, uh, definitely layout views, being able to make uh, selections real easily. Uh, that makes all your effects just so much easier. That's the first thing I do is make a good layout view. Um, so definitely that. Huh? I'm agreeing with the layout view thing. I usually make that before the show and get that all in order before I even get there. Uh, you know, macros are huge for updating all the effects and, and all that, which is just really takes a lot of time if you if you don't have something like that. And then MA tricks, you know, huge on doing, again, programming, depending on where you are, what venue, you're just trying to get your, uh, get your show file looking good before the show. And all those things are very important. Man? Yeah, I'm going to just say like macros are your biggest programming trick. Uh, if you find yourself uh, typing in the same thing a thousand times every show, just make a macro. Just do it. You know, it's you're just going to save yourself so much time. And I know it takes a little time to make a macro, but you do it once and yeah. you're good. And it's going to save you 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Next thing you know. You're done. It's great. So uh, I would say take more time to actually work on your programming macros. Uh, just save save yourself time. Totally. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you, Zach. Um, another question from Dara Sturgis. Dara asks, what are some of your favorite color palettes? Do you prefer full rig looks or choosing color combos on the fly? Yeti? Uh, for me, uh, and I know you can agree with this is uh, no color, uh, just white. Uh, yeah, love it. Is definitely uh, my favorite, but uh, blue and red, uh, purple and green, are definitely uh, orange and cyan. Those are some of my favorites. Is that her? Yeah, I mean, same with all those kinds. You know, like the triad of colors. You look at the color wheels and and do all those. I mean, there's so many different possibilities. Half colors are being used a lot, um, which I, I love using that depending on uh, 
what fixtures you have. I mean, if you have different um, different spot fixtures or whatever in the rig, you're going to run into different color, half color issues. But um, I actually do like to use full color rigs. That stems back from um, emotionally pushing a color on someone to like, you know, if, if the band's like getting evil or if they're getting um, loving or, you know, I, I just love using the, the feeling of a color to help, you know, portray the song. Excellent. Manny? Uh, I'll say my favorite color palette is probably the, um, the classic funk, green, purple, yellow. But I do love the CTB, CTP combo, where it's just like, just, it's all, they're both white, but a little blue and a little pink. That subtlety just, uh, I love that. And um, I always do full color um, looks. I, I barely ever make color combos dur during the show. Uh, the reason for that is I don't want to make a mistake. Um, I want it to always look good. And, you know, you just when you hit a button, you want it to look good no matter what. If you're hitting buttons and they don't look good, work on that button. Um, but I, I like to work on full, full looks. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Very good question, Dara. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, where'd he go? I saw him before. Uh, oh, Matt Calabrese asking anyone mess around with MA3 yet? Getty. Um, I own a command wing. Uh, I've got it out twice, I think, since I got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Herm can speak on it more than I can because he, he uh, did the classes with it. Um, but uh, we sold at LDI, Pete, together. Yep. Yep. Um, and that, I was probably on it more at LDI than I was with my own uh, wing. But uh, Herm went through the whole, all, the whole online classes when they were doing it free. Um, so he could definitely speak more on it. Herm? I that thing was pretty much brand new when I when I broke that out. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to learn to see like kind of how the uh, buttons were laid out and stuff. Uh, I've been on a full size, messing around with it, and I don't necessarily like all of the positioning of the buttons and stuff like that. But I can see where it's gonna, you know, probably eventually uh, be the norm. So I'm gonna have to just kind of switch over to that at some point. But the software itself pretty intuitive uh the the new engine is interesting very different i wish it was kind of uh they wouldn't have just completely changed it but um it's it's still like usable so i mean it, it's it's moving along and i'm sure they'll make a bunch of different changes to it just like they did with the uh, ma2 and eventually it'll it'll turn out to be something that we're all gonna you know like yes manny have you got a chance to poke around on the ma3 yet I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. I'm not fine. <laughs> I'm totally fine. I'm yeah. fine with where I am. MA2 is fantastic. I still have so much to learn. And um, until like I find like a real reason to actually use this or everyone is using it and I have to use it, I'm not going to touch it. It's, it's just... It just seems a little unnecessary at this moment. I think, if anything, they should have kept the MA2 program and just made a new console which i mean you could do run ma2 mode but the whole ma3 thing is just not for me yet Excellent. i agree with that yeah. i'm not a hater i'm just not interested what? He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not interested and you, can, you can't force a man to do something he doesn't want to do there's <laughs> nothing wrong with ma2 that's all i gotta say yeah, <laughs> exactly no, I mean, what software version are you running on ma2 uh, well, I always start with 3343 as my master, just yeah. so I could go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm on anything that, you know, anything I need to have to network to, but my master is on 3343 all the Same. time. It was just the most stable version. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, you could always go up. So, yeah. Um, excellent. Excellent. Um, ben Akon, I see your question and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, uh, excellent. That's about going to wrap it up. We're going to go around and, uh, what's up next for Andrew Getty, Andrew. Um, next we have uh, a drive-in show in, uh, Vermont. 
We're doing the higher ground drive-in next weekend with Goose. Um, and then after that, we're doing the New Hampshire uh, live-in drive, whatever. I'm not sure what the venue is exactly. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, on tour with us, we've got eight Vipers, eight uh, Smarties, Smarty Hybrids. Yes. RH1 Hybrids and then 12 uh, Paladin Bricks. So uh, more than what we've ever had before. So it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Those are the uh, those those JDC esque fixtures that you had. Uh, yeah, kind of. They're LED RGB W. Um, they're like fifty six channel. Um, if you run them in extended mode, so yeah. Uh, yeah, they're fun. Fantastic, fantastic. Herm, what's up next for the Herminator? Well, we got those Connecticut shows coming up, which are going to be fun, and then we got the there's a Yarmouth one. Your mouth, um, your mouth, your mouth, your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the yeah, other, and the big, the works and twiddle for the uh, Halloween things back here in Ohio. That should be fun for you. Nice little double duty. Yeah, that's gonna be a. Just, I'm just gonna cry and just remember all the songs from everything. And <laughs> yeah. 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 I got to run the works uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, that was. That was definitely fun to see those guys back at it. And um, then, you know, I mean, just kind of hanging out with my my fiance and getting life together here over the winter, working on different softwares and stuff that I want to learn. Cool. And uh, just honing all the skills and getting my uh, show file um, better than I can get it now. Excellent. Excellent. Manny, what are you going to be? What do you have next for you? All right, let me get the let me pull my phone. I want to get the plug right. Um, okay, so we're gonna be October third in Legend Valley, Thornville, Ohio. Uh, so let's see, ten uh, October 9th, we got uh, Morris, Connecticut. Uh, and we got uh, let's see, uh, Smoky Mountain Events Center on the twenty fourth in Asheville, North Carolina, and then we got Halloween in Richmond, Virginia at the Diamond. Oh yeah, wait. We just announced uh, uh, Maryland, Frederick, Maryland on the 15th, and Scranton, Pennsylvania on the 16th. I got Scranton. shows, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, it's the most uh, shows I've had in a while. It's great. Yeah, there's, a, there's an excited fan here. Oh, wait, uh, they're excited. Can't wait for Manny and Herm to burn my retinas next month in Ohio. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah. Get ready. <laughs> Get ready for it. Excellent. Well, I just wanted to thank uh, my panel here. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thanks to uh, Root Fire TV. Um, and look forward to a round three of the, light, the lighting roundtable. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Later. Peace.